there was this article you had posted um, that really impacted me. And it was kind of like, regardless of like how you look, you still have like a right to, to be here. And especially like the place that I worked before, it was very obvious that, you know, when I went to work that I was expected to look a certain way and that mm-hmm. the guys who also worked with me weren't held to that standard. I mean, they would show up in like sweatpants or something like that and still get a much more respect than I would <laughs> as a woman. Yeah. What resonated with me about it and when I leave my house to do anything or when I um, go to work or or when I interact with anyone, when I, you know, get on uh, any video conference, you know, I think, you know, I got to have to put makeup on. I have to look a certain way. And if I'm, if I don't, then there's something wrong with that. I think the post was making the point that that's not the price that we have to pay in order to exist is beauty is not the price you have to pay or being done up or whatever, however you want to phrase it. Um, And I think that that is absolutely true, but it's sort of something that I feel like I need to put on my mirror in the morning. So I see it every day. It's one of those truths that is true. And when you hear it, it kind of, it really resonates with you, but it's going against an entire lifetime for most of us of, of socialization to feel the opposite that we don't deserve to be present in a place if we're not dressed up enough or if we're not um you know I know in my profession I'm I'm an attorney as you know and you know there's certain things where a client or even if I'm not seeing clients like there's just an expectation of um being presented in a certain way and I one of my um school um uh, schoolmates in law school uh, she graduated I think a year earlier than me uh, so she's a year before me in law school but I had some classes with her and we're still colleagues and friends I think she went a year without while she was a lawyer without wearing makeup and she just would sort of periodically update people in this in this sort of private group about the outcome of that sort of personal experiment and she got a lot of negative feedback from judges, from, you know, from people that you wouldn't expect to even to ever make a comment about your appearance. Um, So it is upsetting to me that, you know, the world feels like we need to be presenting ourselves in a certain way in order to be allowed to participate. And I feel like that's like you were saying, it's, it's definitely something women have to deal with more like men don't have to wear makeup in order to go to work in the morning. Um, I'm sure some men do, but I think in general, generally speaking, if you saw a man without makeup, you wouldn't think anything about it, obviously. <laughs> um, so that, you know, that's, that is, it's something that's upsetting and frustrating and, you know, at the right moment, really angering to a social norm that uh, I think a lot of us have to unlearn. Um, I know I do because it definitely doesn't come naturally to me to think I don't have to look a certain way. You know, I think I, I haven't done my hair, like I haven't worn my hair down, you know, in, I don't know, months and months. Um, but especially not now that I'm working remotely, <laughs> mostly. But that's why is because I'm working remotely and I don't feel like there's an expectation that I look a certain way when I'm at my house, but I, that suddenly changes if I'm leaving my house to go anywhere, including like to the gym or something. I, you know, have to put on makeup or something and it just seems ridiculous to me because it's not part of the function of working out you don't need to have makeup on your face you have to have your hair put up but that's about it I was talking to a young lady the other day and after work she said some of her friends were downtown hanging out but she didn't want to go because she had a pimple and I was like (laughs) the many things that stopped young women or just women in general from mm-hmm. participating in anything it can be so simple as just a pimple, you know, and yeah. so many opportunities. And she just didn't end up going to have a great time with her friends. She just went home to try to make this pimp, these pimples on her face like disappear. So yeah. Be presentable the next day. Like, <laughs> so yeah, I think, I think it's, if you think about that, you know, try to step back from, you know, everybody understands that impulse. Like I understand that impulse entirely, but if you try to step back and pretend like it, you know, you're, you're coming into this from a, I don't know, you're an alien or something like that, that this is, you're studying us from an anthropological standpoint, like that just seems ridiculous. 
that that would be anything that would limit your life experience, but it totally is. I mean, I think about like I have uh you can't really you can kind of see it. My my daughter has this thing now where and it's adorable. So I let her do it over and over again. But she gets so excited when she sees me that she'll grab my hair and like hold it at right like corners here. And so I'm getting these like broken <laughs> <laughs> broken off pieces. And it's like it's really bothering me when I when I go to uh, work because it's like I can't really you know, hairspray it down or whatever and it's just you know it is what it is it's the stage that she's at and it's really cute when she does that and she just she does it because she's just so freaking excited to see me and she just <laughs> wants to squeeze me as hard as she can but you know it's just yeah. wrecking havoc on my hair but I just <laughs> I've gotten really um very self-conscious about it especially like in these meetings because it'll start to like stick up like that but I guess the point is, is that, I mean, I don't know, it's, why should I, I, it, I mean, it is what it is, it's how I look right now, and, um, but it's not easy to, it's not easy to release that, to, um, I think I have on my mirror something about, like a mantra about releasing others' expectations of me, and it's on my mirror because it's something I can't really do, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to work on it, but, um, it takes a long time to unlearn those things, I think. But we, I think we have to give ourselves space to understand that the reason why we can't wake up overnight and internalize that is because our entire lives, we were socialized to feel the opposite. And, and we were socialized in that way at a time in our lives when it was really, you know, we were very, um, like our formative years, like when we were children, we didn't even realize we're learning these social norms. So, um, but I've thought a lot about it because I, to the extent possible. I mean, I have a daughter and I'd love for her not to feel that way, but I know to some extent she probably will because she grow, she's going to grow up in the slightly different world than I did, but you know, not, unfortunately not that different. So. I think I started wearing makeup because like when I blush, you can really tell. So part of it is like a comfort thing for me. The woman that you were talking about, the lawyer that did that for a full year is incredibly strong. I mean, she's like that about, I mean, she's really very self-affirming and, um, but I don't, I also wonder, I mean, you know, she had a really, she had a struggle growing up. I know just from comments she's made, you know, I know that she uh, had at some point during the debate about um, welfare and and like benefits to low-income families I mean she was talking about how that changed her life essentially because her her mother and her family benefited from um, from I don't know if it was SNAP you know whatever the, the food assistance or something of that nature and I mean obviously that's not my experience I grew up you know, much more privileged than that. But um, I think that she, and she, I think she had, she had a younger sister who was much younger. And I know she spent a lot of time helping Ray have a really close bond, but it seems like more of a mother daughter bond. And she has two daughters now of her own. One of her daughters was born like right after Eva, we were due almost the same day. Um, but she was, uh, um, she has kind of a mother daughter bond with her younger sister. So I think, I don't know if it was being a role model or having to be, you know, having to take charge and be confident early in life. I don't know, but she is very, she's very much that way. I mean, she's a very confident person, but she also will talk about, you know, the struggle of, you know, having her look tired and you know, people say that all the time you look tired or you look, cause when you look washed out or whatever, when you don't have makeup on, it's like, no, it's how I look. It's just, you don't see the enhancement of, you know, the, you know, the highlighting or the low lighting or whatever. And like, I have skin, I have, you know, sometimes my skin, when I was pregnant, I had beautiful skin. That was one of the few physical benefits of it. But um, now it's like my normal skin is, I break out a lot. And so I use makeup to hide that. Um, and which obviously makes the problem worse sometimes, but I feel very uncomfortable if I have like, acne uh, you know that you can see it makes me feel very uncomfortable and, and almost like unprofessional in my in my um, job if I don't have makeup on to cover that and make it look more even like it makes me feel like I'm protected like you're talking about people can see you're blushing it sort of sounded to me almost like a 
like a protection thing, like a shield of some sort. And I sort of feel that way too about my acne and also like my professional persona. Cause I feel like there's so much, you know, wearing a suit, you know, other types of things are very much like, you know, the ex expectations of the profession sometimes. And, but they can also be a shield against, you know, if you feel insecure sometimes I think too. Um, but I think the, the goal is that to know we don't need those things in order to make us a de you know, deserving of a seat at the table or to be present or to enjoy ourselves or whatever else the case may be. So, Can I say how much I do not like that comment? Like, you look tired. Like, <laughs> I'm like really? Yeah. You look at that? It's so rude. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you ever say that to anyone? <laughs> that that's like that's almost as bad as when people and you're and you're pregnant and they're like oh you're getting so big and I'm like and one of my friends made the comment uh that stopped being a compliment when you were 10 years old or something like that and I'm like right? that's exactly right like why did you think about how that sounds like I, I get pregnant women are super they get I got super like sensitive because you just feel like what is going on with my body but but so I know there's a little extra sensitivity. I'm like, I think anybody could know. But yeah, the tired thing is like, unless you're offering me a nap and you have like a bed laid out for me, like, oh, you look tired. Here's your napping spot. Like, exactly. unless you're offering to like get me some sleep, then there's no reason why you should be commenting on how I, if I look tired, because yeah, like, <laughs> it's irrelevant right? and rude. Do you have anything to solve that? Um... Yeah, exactly. Are you proposing a solution? Otherwise, you're just being rude. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, another thing I don't like is the comment you should smile because I'm like oh. it's not your business if I'm smiling or not I'm like one time I was um in a city I wasn't familiar where I was going so I was looking at the map um on my phone and trying to find out where to go and then this construction person was like smile I was like am I just gonna be randomly smiling everywhere I go <laughs> like you know like, kind of like yeah it's not what you're there for in that moment and I think that's that's another thing is like you know going hand in hand with how we look when we we feel like we have to look a certain way in order to be um you know in order to be acceptable in a particular space it's also the how we act like you know like if, if you're not smiling if you're not friendly if you're not being flirty if you're not you know, I can't tell you how many times, like when I'm, you know, in a professional setting, I mean, even talking to like judges and stuff like that, where there'll be some aspect of that kind of flirty small talk that has to happen. And it just is really grosses me out, to be honest, but it's, it's like a, it's, so, it's like a social expectation. And, and that's, um, you know, that's really, and, it, and it's been really, overt before um you know like but when i was young, especially when i was younger and um not as uh ready to respond to it as i am now um not as confident about not dealing with that but yeah you're right i mean that that is an obnoxious comment but it's one you know women are not in it, w women don't exist in a space for you know men's uh, you know, for men's pleasure or whatever you want to call it for their, their interaction. But I think a lot of men feel that, that you do like, you're a pretty girl. Why aren't you smiling? Like, right. And I, there was a construction, like one of his coworkers were walking in front of me and the coworker thought he said it to him and was like looking around and then noticed I was behind him and was like, oh, he's talking to you. I was like, no, he's talking to you. <laughs> Cause I'm like, if you can't say it to another man, don't say it to me. <laughs> exactly. And, and that's the point. Yeah. If you're not going to be saying it to your male colleagues and don't say it to me, I'm here to exist for my own purposes, but, um, but yeah, we have to internalize that too, but that's a part of the culture that we live into that I think, I think it, you know, it's changing. Um, it will change. It'll continue to change because people continue to have conversations about it. They continue to push back on it, you know, but it's, it's still got, you know, ways to go. And, and you even see it from other, you know, you see some of that negativity from other women too. So I think that's part of, yeah. part of what one of the biggest things we can do is try to 
support each other and not, you know, not reinforce those norms to each other. 